Greetings, groovy people! This is the self-proclaimed Blue Dragon, and I welcome you to this week's video. This is a special two-part Pride video, Pride Month video. I was able to squeeze this in, and I'm actually going to have a special video on Friday. So, two videos this week. Doesn't usually happen. But I start out with a stack of my old scripts. I started writing Dark Horse a long time ago. Uh, back in 2008 is when I actually started writing out the scripts instead of just winging it. So today I'm going to talk about some of my LGBT characters who are hiding within these pages and will be revealed in future acts. Woo! Did you hear that? Thunder and lightning. I've been raining a lot lately. Um, but we already know about Rena and Mia. Mia would be lesbian. Uh, Rena, by today's standards, would be considered pansexual, but back then they would have just considered her bi. Chen! This character was influenced by Fushigi Yugi. I didn't like how they did Noriko. I wanted to do my own version. And then she evolved from there. I watched M. Butterfly. I was very immersed in uh, LGB culture for quite a couple of years of my life. So yeah, th this character <laughs> started out looking horrible, but I've worked on her a lot and I've tried to improve her looks. You're seeing some of the old terrible drawings of them, but the other character that I want to focus on today is Nikki. Uh, well, I'm not going to talk about her today. I'm going to talk about her in the next video. Obviously, influenced by Nicki Minaj, not just because she was the voice of Sugalai in Steven Universe, but also because um, I just like some, I, before I even knew about Steven Universe, I liked some of um, her songs, so um, not so much a lot of her newer stuff, but anyway, I was influenced by her. I really liked her fashion sense, and so I, I wanted to create my own version of her. And so these are the characters I'm going to be talking about because I've already talked about Rin and Mia in this video. Part one's going to discuss Zhu Feng and their background. And then part two, I'm going to talk about Nikki or Josephine as her given name was. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the sketching and the inking. Okay, so this video I'm talking about Zhu Feng. Their birth name, the name given to them, was Chen Zhu Shen. I'm probably mispronouncing that. If there are any Chinese or Chinese-speaking viewers, please let me know how to pronounce these names. I'll have them up above. But yeah, Chen was third generation Chinese-American. His parents were immersed in the Chinese culture, stayed within their neighborhood, and so they spoke very little English. Uh, they were quite traditional, and Chen was the only son out of three children. He had two older sisters. He was closest to his eldest sister, who was the only person before the war who knew they identified as a woman. She will also be the only in his family to survive the plague, and the traumas that they go through is what, um, well, it's, it's Zhu Fang's Word of Wednesday impetus. The things they go through that was Zhu Fang's impetus to create the business that she opens after the war. That's all I'm going to say. It's no spoilers. So from here on out, I'm going to call uh, this character Zhu Fang and refer to her as she slash they. Um, Zhu Fang was inspired by many people and characters, many different experiences that I've had. Uh, in the late 2000s, I was immersed in the LGBT culture. I lived up by Chicago, so I was going to clubs and different shows, some really fun drag shows, actually in Springfield, Illinois. Um, I love the bar there. It used to be called the Station House. I don't know, it's changed names a billion times, so I don't know. Anyway, they would all oftentimes have different drag shows, and that was always so fun to be a part of. And I was also around this time introduced to some various films and musicians who really changed and influenced my art. Now, I I've been listening to the Scissor Scissors for a long time, but I was introduced to the film Pink Flamingos, who, if anybody knows the main character in that, Divine, that's the character, that's the person, not, not the character, but that's the person who influenced or basically was Ursula from The Little Mermaid. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna like pretend that I like the film. I, I respect it as an art film for what it is. And the show is actually supposed to be kind of an event and a spectacle because while the film, you're supposed to see it out in theaters and there would be things going on um, during the film within the audience, they would have things going on so it was 
supposed to be more interactive than passive, so I mean, as a film itself, I respect it. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna say <laughs> that it was my favorite film. I do like some John Waters movies. I, I really liked um, Serial Mom <laughs> a lot, uh, more than Hairspray. But anyway, uh, I was also, I mean, I've, I've always liked David Bowie and Placebo. Um, the main musician, or the lead singer from that is Brian Molko. I've, I've always really been influenced by and appreciated people who in their art have appeared very androgynous, something that David Bowie did a lot of and um, was probably spearheaded a lot of that back in the 70s. And then Brian Molko, who is a British musician from, he's a lead singer of Placebo. I always found him to be very attractive and, you know, as well as being androgynous. Um, so I, I was getting really immersed in a lot of different films and musicians and cultures and I want a character that reflects some of this. I mean, this character is actually very different than all of those things that I've mentioned, but they've been inspired by characters like Noriko from Fushigi Yugi, <laughs> as I mentioned, I didn't really like how she was handled. Also by, a little bit by the Starlights, not so much in Sailor Moon. I was actually more influenced by uh, Haruka Tenno, who was one of my favorites. I may or may not have had a crush on her. Actually, I like Setsu better, but I, I really liked Haruka. Also, my planet is Uranus, so Uranus, Uranus, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I like Uranus uh, better. I like to say Uranus better. <laughs> but uh, at, at any rate, um, what really finalized Zhu Fang, this character, was when I saw a film by David Cronenberg called M. Butterfly. And what I liked about this film was that for once, the butterfly gets their revenge. I mean, if you've seen the original uh, opera, spoiler, things don't really go so well for the butterfly in <laughs> opera. It's a very old opera. So if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, but I think you should know that nothing good happens to the poor woman in this. So I liked that it was a very, there was a lot of twists in it, and I know it was kind of controversial, but for once, the the butterfly, <laughs> the character was, in, I felt, empowered. Maybe I don't necessarily align with the political views of that character, but I thought it was an interesting take on the original story. And for once, you know, the Imperialists get their comeuppance. But anyway, I digress. So that that really influenced me was Du Feng. Also, I really love that idea of uh, the metamorphosis, like the idea of a butterfly. So a lot of this character's design will have just, you know, it kind of snuck in. Well, not snuck in. Sometimes it just looks like giant butterfly hair or bunny ears or whatever and sometimes it'll be more like a clip or something so I really wanted that butterfly imagery and symbolism for this character because they were able to metamorphose from you know what society and you know what was expected of them in childhood into what they felt more comfortable with so that was really what what influenced this specific character um, more on the personality Zhu Fang her personality I, I had a I have a lot of fun with her personality because she is one of the quote unquote older characters in the comic. She's only younger than Oshin and at the whopping age of 23 in 2004, it makes her one of the wiser characters because there are there are some older people in the in the story, but a lot of them die with the plague. So most of the people who survive happen to be younger, although there will be some older characters. Um, but she's also younger than Renshaw. I think Renshaw is actually the oldest character in the story so far, aside from Kasuma, who's like a demon. The demons don't count. I'm talking about the human characters. But yeah, what I wanted her personality to be is slightly wisecracking. I kind of envisioned her to be a little bit like Orin from Yo Jimbo, N not like a gang leader and more of a, she has more of a heart of gold than that. But I wanted her to be very in control of herself and her emotions and her feelings. And kind of a, you know, a little bit like a Lady Oboshi from Princess Mononoke. I know those are Japanese characters influencing, you know, this Chinese. Well, actually, no. Um, well, maybe Lady Oboshi might've been Chinese because were they, ta was that taking place on 
the mainland? I don't remember. Uh, but any, at any rate, yeah, I, I know that there's some Japanese characters. I realize that the Japanese and Chinese cultures are completely different. But these are the characters who influence the personality for this, not necessarily the culture for this character. But yeah, um, we'll see a lot more of her once we finally make it to Act 12. Oh my gosh. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. That's all for this week. Please tune in on Friday for the special conclusion to this two-part uh, Pride Month video. I'm actually making an extra video this month. I'm I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> but anyway, quick announcements. Hard copies of Dark Horse Act 1 are now available. I got them from my printers. They're, uh, if you're interested, email me cerulean.graphic at gmail.com. I take PayPal. They're 750 plus shipping uh, wherever you're living. You know, that'll depend on where you're, where you're living. There's also digital copies, you know, available for three bucks. Question of the week. Are you or have you done anything special for Pride Month? Um, have you attended any parades, parties, put on any events, participated in events, created any art? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Like the video. Subscribe. Do the bell thing. <laughs> <laughs> Peace and love, very well, and keep on trucking.